Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Jessica Mellinger from the University of Michigan, and I'm here with Dr. Brian Perlman from Wellstar Atlanta Medical Center and Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks right. for having me. Thanks for being here today. Well, your article was terrific, and we really enjoyed reading it. Um, you wrote about how do we manage people after they achieve a sustained viral response with hepatitis C medications. So right. obviously with the high degree of success and you know the, the, the absolute booming success of hep C treatment, many of us are dealing with this. What do we do with our patients afterward? Um, so it's really good news. Uh, what can we tell our patients about their prognosis after they achieve SVR? Right, so you know it's a wonderful thing to achieve the, the cure, but we, we need to talk about what does it really mean aside from eradicating a virus. And the best part about it is the overall survival now, knowing that hepatitis C involves a lot of things outside the liver, the extra hepatic manifestations, that our overall survival rate improves by about 50, 52 percent in the largest prospective trial we have, about 10,000 patients. So it's really nice to have that solid data behind us to say that. The problem is, uh, patients aren't getting screened for hepatocellular carcinoma, which is our biggest worry uh, in cirrhotics or near cirrhotics after that cure, and they get lost to follow-up. Um, in fact, 20 fewer than 20% of these patients are getting that needed cancer surveillance, and it's a big deal. Wow, that's a really low percentage. Um, what kind of strategies have you used or have you heard about to help get those that screening up. Right, we that. try to use electronic records to tag these patients, but often uh, they're lost to follow up, but we really need to uh, do better. We send reminders to the primary care physicians and clinicians uh, and really try to get them back in. But the sad part is among those hepatocellular carcinomas diagnosed after cure or SVR, fewer than 10% had had any screening. Wow. And I often get the debate from practitioners, what's better, CT, MRI, ultrasound, the standard is usually ultrasound. But the reality is that it's not as important as actually doing the surveillance. You know, whether you use alpha feta protein or do an MRI, what counts is you get the, the, the surveillance done, which is unfortunately not being done. Right. And what are the current recommendations about HCC surveillance in general? Right. So every six-month imaging and the, the international guidelines are still uh, ultrasounds every six months because uh, probably most cost-effective and uh, uh, the only ones that really been shown to improve mortality. Uh, also less risk, radiation, et cetera, gadolinium, uh, contrast, nephropathy. We don't have that with the uh, ultrasound modality. The alpha feta protein is plus or minus. There's some advocates for that and some uh, that are like me that we feel we get a lot of false positives and we chase down a lot of alpha feta proteins that turn out to be nothing except patient worry and cost. But uh, nonetheless, however you do it, the important thing again is that you do it almost like colorectal screening. We have lots of ways, but uh, it's more important in some ways that they get it done, mm -hmm. not so much that they do a particular method. Okay. Now there was a debate at least a few years ago or some concern that HCC after direct acting antiviral therapy might actually be worse or be increased in some sense. Right. Where are we at with the evidence on that right uh, now? I think now the, there are enough evidence bases to say that it does not engender increased risk of HCC. If anything, uh, the latest uh, numbers that I've seen that are pretty solid are about a 70% reduction in hepatocellular carcinoma mm -hmm. in direct acting agents as well as interferon-based therapies. But I think that that was um, some, some small bias studies that just never panned out when we looked at uh, big uh, groups of patients followed. Which is again good news for patients. Who right, get treated. very much so. Yeah. yeah. Now patients who get treated and cured can certainly have elevated liver enzymes after they get their cure. Um, what do we do with those patients? Okay, so the first thing to make sure is that these are not late relapses, which frankly are so rare in, in 20 years plus practice, I've never seen it. But if we look at databases like the Gilead database of, uh, of the the numbers, the sheer numbers of patients they treated, the chance of a late relapse was about 0.1%, um, which is extremely reassuring. In fact, the rate of reinfection, which is three times more common, is something that I think some practitioners will see, particularly patients who are active uh, drug uh, injection drug users or HIV positive patients who men who have sex with men, et cetera, and their rates of recrudescence or reinfection is, is pretty high. So if those numbers are surprisingly low on the, the people who inject, about two to maybe six percent in active drug users per year, and some of the MSM populations as high numbers I've seen as 15 percent. But again, 
and most of the time it's going to be a reinfection uh, rather than a, a true relapse. And of course, we can't forget that many of these folks have comorbid conditions like fatty liver. So if someone's still 300 pounds overweight after cure, they're still going to have elevated aminotransferases uh, in surveillance post cure. Sure. So for patients who have cirrhosis, who get treated, get cure, what do we do about varices, variceal screening in those patients? Okay, so another important thing besides hepatocellular carcinoma is, is still varices surveillance. And uh, upper endoscopy every three years is the standard. Uh, it's a little controversial after cure, uh, but, but most societies are continuing to recommend that they get that needed uh, endoscopic surveillance. There's been a uh, criteria called the Pavino 6 criteria, originated from Italy, in which you can use your fibro scan or transgenal astography plus your platelets. And if you have two criteria, which are under 150,000 platelets and uh, the uh, stiffness score of under 20 kilopascals, then you, that obviates the need for endoscopic surveillance. And uh, you might be able to prevent good 20, 25% of your patients. The largest database that we have for people who are cirrhotics at baseline who are cured, uh, using this Pavino criteria, uh, 20, 25% were eliminated, the upper endoscopy, and they only missed about a 1% or, or fewer of the patients that had what we call high-risk varices that should have been identified. So you could feel pretty good that if your patients have been cured and they meet this Bovino 6 criteria, again, under 20 and under 150,000, um, they, you could feel good that you don't need to do that surveillance and you have some validation behind your uh, hypothesis. Great. Well, it sounds like there's lots of good news for patients who get cured with from hep C, but things we still need to do down the road to take good care of them, especially if they have cirrhosis. No doubt. Great. Well, thanks for joining us. Thank I appreciate it. Thank you. It's been it. a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you.